hello friends welcome to share market friend here i have opened 2017-18 dhfl company annual report so i'll be covering a small overview of my understanding of this annual report with you okay i'll be sharing it with you uh, I, uh, it, it's not possible to cover all the important points in this annual report but whatever possible in uh, small time i will try to cover it okay so here it shows that company has crossed asset under management uh, till 31st march 2018 that is above one lakh crore uh, then capital adequacy ratio is 15 percent above and net worth of the company is in the range of 9000 crore then here they have shown main uh, operating overall working of the company company basically deals in uh, giving housing and non-housing loans in housing loan it gives loans to purchasing of new property self-construction loans extension and improvement uh, loans uh, also it sponsors or gives loans to project where uh, which company helps to uh, give low risk uh, where they offer loan to the project and also to the customers over uh, getting overall control on the project and loan also uh, they also provide non-housing loans in mortgage backed loans then commercial property and land loans then sme also is a sector where they provide loans uh, they raise funds from dhfl fixed deposit and recurring deposit and other sources also here they have given a basic uh, overall plus points of the company if you want you can uh, read it into detail first is industry knowledge and customer insights second pan india distribution third rich talent pool of the employees fourth robust business processes uh, basically this company this is the most important point it operates in tier 2 and tier 3 cities where it faces little competition and a deeper penetration in these areas is easy for this company where they compete with banks etc okay this is one point uh, here they have provided uh, chairman and managing directors forward in the start uh, they have addressed various issues in this letter and then there is a letter from joint managing director and ceo of the company okay so then the next point i want to show is that key performance indicators of the company shown in annual report for last five to six years in uh, if you see the gross revenue of the company it was in the range of 4000 crore for 2012-13 in five years it has more than doubled to 10,000 crore uh, earning per share remained mostly flat in the range of 30 to 50 uh, 35 to 45 rupees net profit has linearly grown from 450 crore to uh, more than 1000 crore in last year then cumulative disbursement has tremendously grown from 42,000 crore to more than 1.5 lakh crore these are the key highlights of 10 year uh, you can see the continuous uh, growth every year there is not such any big dip in company uh, overall output result earning per share is grown from 19 rupees 26 rupees 28 38 41 47 there was bonus share here so there is split into it here okay uh, then here's a list of board of directors basically mr kapil vadhavan is chairman and managing director of the company and mr dheeraj vadhavan is non-executive director they both are brothers uh, they are son of late sri rajesh kumar vadhavan who established this company before 30 to 40 years back and mr kapil vadhavan helped company for into various other wings like uh, life insurance general insurance investment etc also he helped expand the company then there is Mr. Harshil Mehta, uh, Mr. G. P. Kohli, independent director. Then other independent directors are Mr. Vijay Kumar Chopra, uh, Mr. Mannil Venu Gopalan, Mr. Vijay Vijaya, Miss Vijaya, Miss Vijaya Sampat. Okay, and all these directors actually have a wide amount of experience, nearly two to three decades more than that, and in the field of banking, LIC, uh, like head of RB, head of uh, SEBI, etc., uh, variety of fields. Okay, so next point I want to cover is that they have given here management discussion discussion discussing all the points related to finance and all other aspects of the company so basically they have first discussed the global issues of china america war actually this has already happened and in the progress too much so it's a past uh, details so 
also they have discussed the implementation of GST and RERA impact on housing companies actually that impacted very badly these companies but later on uh, currently they are on track and they are recovering from this and overall RERA has helped to the housing, fin housing finance companies here they have shown a graph where 37% of market share in 2012-13 is expected to grow to 41% in 2018-19 so there is a good scope for uh, housing finance and NBFC companies also the reducing uh, part of banks okay then they have discussed uh, the constant growth rate of uh, these companies it is in the range of 18 to 20 percent okay uh, then they have discussed few plus points for what is helping the housing finance company is that uh, government is giving lot of tax intensives uh, to buying house that is helping to uh, people to take loan for uh, buying home etc so that is creating more customers for DHFL like companies then also there are schemes of government like slum redevelopment affordable housing in partnership credit link subsidy scheme etc also uh, government is easing lot of fundraising norms through SEBI uh, facilitating investment norms also RBI facilitating various ECB uh, route policies then infrastructure status for affordable housing companies etc so this has all helped this company and in future also this is going to help definitely then uh, they have shown the financial penetration graph here in rural areas where DHFL is strong so they have a lot of scope where is still financial penetration is very lower than 10% even okay so in the next point we'll discuss about threats and challenges for H housing finance companies okay so basically this company work like they take long-term loans from banks and or uh, from debt market they raise the loan and then giving the short-term loans to a short-term or kind of uh, broken long-term loans to customers for buying house and etc so in that uh, process they earn through interest income so if they don't get a long term uh, loan access or low cost fund access for operating it would be difficult for housing finance companies also varying interest rate etc they do create risk for these companies then uh, poor implementation of government schemes or also pure uh, poor infrastructure growth is also hindrance for these companies uh, then lower availability of houses for higher uh, demand that is also creating how prices of houses uh, also acquisition cost of lands for the project funding is a big hurdle for these companies uh, company is doing a lot of digitization that is they have expressed as their plus point uh, then there is a lot of competition in this field that is creating or adding up to NPAs uh, due to faster uh, effort to acquire the customers etc okay so here they have mentioned all the plus points of the company working uh, then I'll cover the main point company has forwarded into various this joint ventures with insurance and asset management companies okay NPAs are way below uh, 1% that is really good thing a brand ambassador and advertisement is a plus point of this company then the com the constituent of fundraising of this company is basically from 43 percent banks and financial institution debt market they are raising 40 percent public fixed deposit 11 percent and refinancing from the nhb national housing bank three percent external commercial borrowing three percent so that is overall helping them to raise funds in a easy way their operating uh, cost basically 50 percent occu uh, uh, 50 per 51 percent is made up of employee costs so that is one point about this company uh, here is some page number uh, 105 where is extract of annual report is provided uh, here the list of subsidies and their holding is provided it is mostly in the range of 26 to 50 percent uh, company holds uh, 39 percent through Vadhavan Cap international capital company whose head is Vadhavan itself so company is holding uh, overall company owning uh, company to 39 percent other seven percent are mutual funds and two percent are banks and 40 percent are non-institutional Indians then eight percent are individual shareholders uh, this and 20 percent are foreign institutional portfolio holders 
that come that makes 60 percent of uh, non promoter holding and other holders in the individual shareholders uh, name of Junjunwala is also there here uh, promoter shareholding changes are mentioned also there are details of individual percentage ownership in the company and changes in that in last one year okay and actually indebtedness of this company is not an issue because it operates in the loan itself then remuneration is provided it is in like mr harshil mehta is getting 3 crore 74 lakhs then mr kapil vadhwan is getting 2 a 2 crore plus and other senior member salaries are also mentioned other details other lot of uh, details are provided in this report so it is not possible to cover all the details but i tried to cover overview of the company through my understanding okay thank you for uh, listening me please like share comment and uh, subscribe to the channel thank you very much